Everybody okay? Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Um, initially, I thought I'll be talking to 10 people, and five of them are going to be wearing blue shirts. So it's good to see that uh, we've got more and more in the audience. Uh, so my name is Oded. Um, I work for PlumGrid as a system engineer, and I've got about 20 minutes to give you about an hour worth of content. So we're going to uh, kind of rush through some of the slides. Uh, we are going to do a demo. So this is a live demo. I know this is a demo theory. We promise you that. So let's cover that. Uh, but before we get to the demo, just a couple of slides about um, what it is that we do. So at PlumGrid, we developed virtualized network infrastructure to power up you know, the next generation, the modern data center. And when we started looking at um, some of these um, um, capabilities of what SDN is, some of the things that we wanted to achieve is to be able, for example, to create a software stack that can run on any network and can be scalable and can provide security and can be used things like a policy-driven type of an attribute. Okay, so this is a, what we kind of set our sights to build. Um, we are a software-only solution running as an overlay in the SDN um, kind of a space. So for those of us who've been in the cloud uh, space for quite some time, uh, we all understand that networking in the cloud has been kind of a lagging behind some of the um, advancements and innovation that we saw coming from the compute and the storage uh, world. And we're, we had to play a little bit of catch up to kind of close this gap of what networking needs to be done and to allow this next generation data center that really um, comes down to how do we automate things in the data center, okay? How I can give an application or some kind of a higher layer abstraction um, the ability to go and to orchestrate things not only from a compute perspective and from a storage perspective, but also from the network. And the way for us to do that is really look at software-defined networks. We all realize that the physical network is a bit of a challenge, and if I got to orchestrate something in the physical world, it's pretty much sending somebody to the data center to move cables around, and that just didn't work for us anymore. So that was what we were trying to solve when we started um, PlumGrid about three years ago. So we're in an OpenStack uh, conference, and I'm sure some of you guys are asking, so hold on. We already have a solution for networking in OpenStack, right? And we call this Neutron. Um, why do we need other solutions, right? What's wrong with, with Neutron? So let me start by saying that, first of all, nothing is wrong with Neutron, OK? In Neutron, the way that we kind of see it, Neutron, is this overall umbrella of network services that can live within the OpenStack um, kind of a framework. And when we look at Neutron from an API perspective, this is kind of the unified language that we have. We got a set of APIs, and if I want to build something from a network, I call the API. Hey, go and create a network, create a subnet, create a router, connect those together. So a user or an application can go and then connect and consume these services. The challenge for us began when you look what's underneath Neutron and some of these components that happens kind of underneath the API layer. And this is where we started seeing some of the challenges about things like the network node, things like agents, things like OVS. And if you just look at the typical deployment of, uh, of a Neutron using the OVS and some of the agents, that presented a challenge for a lot of companies. And you know, our booth is right over there, and I think half of the people that walk up and talk to us are saying the same thing. It says, we're trying to build this network. We've got a challenge with Neutron. It doesn't scale. We need HA. We need something that looks a little bit better. So given that as the context of what we were trying to solve, Keep that picture in mind. I'm going to go back to a similar picture in a little while that shows you how this looks with, um, with Plum Grid components underneath. Before we get to um, look at how we do that, I want to take a step backward and talk about virtual domains. And I think this is maybe one of the most unique things about the technology that we've built that really helps understand why this is so unique. Okay? And when we talk about um, network virtualization, some of the things that we want to understand is really the operational elements of how do we operate a virtual network or an SDN. So we started thinking about this. I um, we'll say, OK, we've got APIs, and we've got programmable data planes, and we've got software switches. But we kind of looked at 
how virtual machines are being created in the network and some of the advance that virtual machine gave the, the IT world and how it, it really revolutionized the way we do things. And we saw some similarities between these two approaches. Look at a virtual machine. It's a software container. Okay? It's completely decoupled from the hardware that it runs on. It has an identity. I can assign it to a user. I can copy it. I can move it. I can clone it. And I can put an application and an operating system in it. Right? We wanted to take the same thing but build it for a network. Okay? Can we take this software container, this blank canvas? Okay? Instead of an operating system and an application, we would put a network function. Okay? And this is where we came up with the concept of a virtual domain. And if you look at it, this solves a lot of the operational problems that if you're an application developer and you want to just call some kind of an API or do some kind of an automation, so this is the perfect model for you. This is something that you can understand. Okay? Um, scalability, that's another thing that we were able to achieve using this domain. The footprint of a virtual domain is, is very, very small on your infrastructure. So we're looking at thousands of virtual domains. Okay, think of a virtual domain as a tenant or an application or any other isolation container that you want in your cloud. Obviously, multi-tenancy is a given. Some of the things that we can do also in, in the virtual domain is actually encrypt those. If you're running a bank, this is extremely important for you. Traffic from your virtual domain might pass through multiple servers. You want to encrypt that data in between. Fault isolation, sometimes an overlooked feature of what we do, but um, I know the networking guys here are going to love it. If you mess up this virtual network, you only messed up the virtual domain. Your physical network is going to stay intact. And this is something very, very important. We can also do things like visibility and scalability and everything that you can get from a software type of a solution that runs in your data center. So why do we believe this is the right architecture for the cloud? And again, I think there's a certain disconnect between how server guys or application guys see a cloud to how networking guys see a cloud. Okay? And anybody here that's trying to build clouds will know that there's a certain kind of disconnect between these two people. What this virtual domain um, notion gives us is a language that some of these guys can actually understand. If I'm an application developer, what I have in mind is the top picture. It's the automation, it's the API, it's software defined. I don't need to understand how a physical network is built. If I'm a network guy or a data center architect, the bottom part of this is what I understand. So in a way, we kind of give people the ability to do both things. Design your data center in the proper way, using all of the best practice of how data centers should be designed, but still give the agility of a cloud into your developers, into your um, server guys, into the people that want to leverage those resources coming from your data center. And if we look at kind of an example of how this is then being projected into your network, Think, for example, at tenant number two. That's his virtual domain. That's a virtual topology, right? And once this is actually being rendered or pushed into the topology, it becomes the virtual network that lives and runs in the data plane of the solution. OK? Some of the components that we have in our solution, um, and again, there's, there's, there's a lot of innovation that went into this technology. I mean, we started working. We actually started by developing the data plane component. You know, in SDN, we always have the data plane. This is where packets are running. Control plane, where this is where the logic is. We started building the data plane component that we called uh, the IOVisor, or the IOVisor Edge. Um, this is a programmable data plane component that lives inside a Linux kernel. Okay? Um, it replaces kind of the OVS. Okay? So if you guys know the OVS, we sit right next to it. So we take it out and we put that. Um, one of the unique things about this component that it's a fully distributed programmable data plane. That means that you can write new functions into it in a very easy um, and, and automated way. So once we solved that, we had to put some control plane in place. And the control plane, um, again, to solve some of the resiliency problems that we saw with Neutron, 
we developed a highly available director clusters. The reason we call these guys directors and not controllers, because in many situations, they don't actually control the traffic. They orchestrate virtual domains into the data plane. So once a virtual domain is actually being rendered into the topology, um, we support a headless operation. That means I can take out the directors. Everything that's being pushed in the topology into the data plane will continue to work without any problems. So going back to this picture that we had earlier on, here's OpenStack, here's Neutron. We do support all of the Neutron APIs, OK? So but anything underneath the API going down is all plum grid. We take out the OVS, we take out ML2, we take out OpenFlow. Everything is then being changed. So the reason we maintain the Neutron API is that because this gives us this compatibility with everything else that rides on top of OpenStack. So to make kind of the analogy, you know, you get to drive the car in the exact same way, but the engine is completely different now, OK? So for you as a user, it becomes transparent, OK? You get the capabilities of the IO visor, the performance, scalability, resiliency. The APIs um, stay the same. Once the API is pushed into our director cluster, these virtual domains or virtual topologies are being created, and then they're being pushed into the data plane component. And you kind of see the uh, illustrated version of it. OK, right on time. I promised you guys a demo. Um, because we are a little bit adventurous, we're going to do a live demo. And we've been uh, praying all morning for the demo gods. So uh, hopefully, <laughs> everything is going to work. Um, so what we've got here is an OpenStack uh, deployment. This is a Red Hat flavor. We do support all of the other distributions, by the way. We're a standard Neutron plugin, uh, but this one is running on, uh, on Red Hat. And what I've got here, um, just to quickly switch into the, um, to the project side, on the network, I've kind of created some of these components in advance to save us some time. This is a standard type of a network. I got the external connectivity. I have a, a router. I have another network, which is kind of the tenant network, and I've got a VM connected to it. So everything that was done here from the Neutron API, from Horizon, I didn't mess with anything else. Let's see how this thing looks like in the Plum Grid um, user interface. So as I go and create these components in OpenStack, these kind of icons suddenly appear into my canvas. OK, remember the canvas that you get to draw your topology? So this is now my topology. Now, the cool thing about these things is that these are all live component of a network, OK? I can click on a router and get some information about it. I can look at a static route list, OK? And this can be populated. You can add entries to that. I can look at my um, NAT, for example. Is there any outbound or any configurations that I've got running on my NAT? By the way, Everything you see on the topology here is fully distributed into the data plane. Nothing runs as a VM. Nothing runs in a control plane. Okay. So I also have a virtual machine that is running. Um, to see the virtual machine, we actually can see it here uh, with its uh, UUID. But um, let's look at it from, um, from Horizon. So just a small virtual machine. We call it Cirrus. Um, what I want to show you today is a new feature we just released uh, in this version, which is OpenStack Networking Suite version 2. Um, and it's an internal DNS feature. So some of you know this is a project that's actually happening in Neutron. It's called Designate. It's not released yet. We've kind of a little bit ahead of the curve. We do support all of these APIs that are coming from, but we're able to implement that DNS as a, again, a distributed function into our data plane which allows you to basically do name resolution inside your virtual network, inside your virtual domain. So to show you that, um, let's first of all see if this VM is up. OK. OK. We don't have the external connectivity here because of the network. But let's uh, go and create another VM. 
um, and see if we can get the NEM resolution to work um, at least internally. So this is going to be an Ubuntu VM. Uh, let's call it Ubuntu 7. Yep. We also need to tie it to a network. By the way, once this VM is booting up, let's look at the Cirrus VM and how it shows up in our DNS. So if I'm looking at my uh, DNS component here, and okay, eventually it will come up. No? Okay. Um, one of those right-click options actually does give me to see the host when it was registered to the DNS, when the host comes up. It goes and registers itself in the DNS so I can see the host name. Here I can just see some of the static routes, if I've decided to use any static routes, anything that has to do with the zone attributes. Okay, so this is my domain. So this is a fully functional internal DNS to my environment. Now, obviously, in a multi-tenancy environment, you'll be running namespaces. So you have the same kind of an IP addressing across multiple cloud or multiple tenants, each with the same IP address scheme, different domain, and your name resolution is going to say contained to your virtual domain. Um, so, so we got 40 seconds for questions. And if not, like I said, we're booth E18 right over there. Please come talk to us um, if you want to, and uh, thank you very much.